going to talk a little bit about the digitalization issue because we talk a lot about it, but I found out, having worked with it for the last uh, 33 years of my life, that few people really understand what's behind it. So the idea is, uh, sorry, how do I move forward? This one? This one. Yeah. <laughs> I will talk a little bit about one particular topic of uh, the digitalization aspect, which is fuel monitoring. Fuel management is very complicated. It's uh, one of the biggest costs on, uh, on a ship, if not the biggest one after the crewing. And uh, fuel monitoring is one of the areas where you can really apply digitalization. But there is so much misunderstanding about it, so much misconcept that I will explain to you a little bit why it is about this. So first of all, Essentially, digitalization means not having too much man input into the activity itself. There is a very strong misunderstanding about the concept of digitization and digitalization. If I print something on a PDF format, that is not digitalization. I'm simply digitizing a paper, you know, a piece of paper. Digitalization, as you can read on the screen, is the use of digital tech technologies to basically extrapolate data automatically and analyze them, okay? The problem is that when you try to do this on board of a ship and basically you want to connect and extract the information, and these are, are basically all the areas where you can extract information directly. Well, there is a very strong missing point especially on the automation, so on the engine automation, and that is standard, standardization. Nothing is standardized in an automation plant. We've been lucky enough that in the navigation area, we almost all the time use the same protocol to transfer data, is NMEA, NMEA 0183, but when it goes into the engine room, essentially it's a mess. You have 22 different protocols and every, every protocol basically can use a different data string. And when you try to connect whatever data collector you want to install on board, you basically have to run one chip after the other and you get different data or different data strings from each one of them. So if I take, for instance, just the fuel monitoring part and I go into the automatic data collection, lots of people say, oh, it's very simple. You just send the crew on board to basically read data and they think that digitalization means that instead of having an analog reader on board, I have a digital reader on board. This is bullshit. Digitalization is not reading data by hand and writing them. Why not? Because if you do it, you, have, you can have more mistakes. If you do it, you have possibility to forget to read the data. You basically increase the workload on, on crews. We are desperately trying to decrease the workload because it has grown exponentially. I'm also a seafarer, I was in the engine room. To go on board today and see how, the, how overloaded the crew can be about paper, paperwork, is a little bit disappointing, especially after 33 years of so-called you know, computerization of everything that we do. So when we talk about fuel management, okay? Well, first of all, if you don't have two specific items, which are basically the flow meters and the torque meters, there is no fuel management. Okay, you're simply basically back to the basic of trying to do it, you know, with the sound meter, with the analog ways of always measuring how the fuel is being consumed. And when you install a new flow meter, very often we go on board and they say, oh, it's digital, but it doesn't have a digital output. And again, it simply means digital, that it has a digital reader. That is not what we're talking about. So to give you an example, okay, Let's, uh, this is a real life example, so a job that we, we are doing on a, on a very large fleet of tankers. And essentially it's divided in three countries and uh, 140 ships. And the kind of readiness that we had to do, so we went to every single ship and analyzed the automation plan that they had, the torque meter that they had, the flow meters that they had. Remember that if the engine is big enough, it needs at least two flow meters per each engine, so not only one because you, don't, you have to measure also the return flow. And what happened, I, I'm not going to go through the, the entire details of every single vessel, but we had to analyze each one of them. We had to ask the crew to write to us which kind of flow meter, which kind of torque meter they had. 
And at the end of the examination of the whole fleet, we find out that only one fleet was pretty ready, as you can see here. It had only 21 ships, and half of them were ready to basically had the, the right flow meter and the right torque meter. All the others were simply not ready. And when we analyzed the need of the fleet to, to buy hardware and to install hardware to become ready for real digitalization of, of fuel monitoring, we reach $1.5 million. And that is exclude, excluding the labor work of uh, installing every single element, even if the vast majority of them can be installed by the crew. So, of course, you may say, is it worth it? You know, of course, it was very worth whether where the oil was uh, $60 a barrel and definitely $130 a barrel. I really don't know if it's worth it at uh, $30. I presume it is because you're saving 3 to 5% of consumption if you start looking very deeply into fuel monitoring, considering also that inside the look of fuel monitoring, you have to check on pilferage, wasters, and you know the kind of little trick that suppliers can, can do at times when they provide fuel. But the most important message here is that digitalization does not really come free of charge, is definitely not plug and play. It doesn't substitute people, it simply shifts them. As Frank was saying before, we, need, we will still need people to analyze the data that we get. We will still need people to build the right flow meter, the right torque meter, and so on. And we will still need people to go on board ships when the ships arrive ashore. I'm a great believer in unmanned vessels, in automated ships, but I don't think at all that it will uh, basically eliminate the seafarers. It will move them a little bit more ashore. You will still probably need the three to five people on board, but all the maintenance will still have to be carried out when the ship arrives ashore, which is a little bit what, what the aeronautical industry is doing. And the other important part, I repeat, is about the standardization. Aeronautical industry, has been able to fly all over the planet in a very automated way because they standardized everything. In shipping, we have standardized nothing. We don't even have a standard noon reporting system, yet every ship does it, but every company does it in a different way. So my final take is remember that it's not entirely, you know, an industry which can move forward unless we, we understand what we need to do in order to be able to move forward with digitalization. Thank you very much.